<laughs> this podcast is Dino Night. Okay, so we're here with Jessica Wolf with Fifth in Birmingham. A uh, would you call it a country western band? I would call it a country rock band. Country rock band. What are there fiddles? There is a fiddle player. Are there any steel guitars? No, we don't have any steel guitars. We have a banjo player. And banjo player? How many tubas? <laughs> Zero tubas. But we're thinking about adding one. Oh, good, yeah. Because I think that might countrify you a little more. I think it would. I think it would. <laughs> How long have you been together? Uh, eight years. Maybe nine. Uh, how many uh, songs do you cover? We cover about 20 songs. 20 covers and like 23 originals. So do you try to fit all of your originals into each show and then sprinkle it with cover? I mean, uh, with covers, or do you mostly try to do covers and then sprinkle in, or is it 50-50? Uh, usually we try to do mostly covers and sprinkle in, I mean, mostly originals and sprinkle in the covers. Oh, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes bands um, like Steel Panther, they used to be called Metal Shop or Metal Works or something like that. And so they would do they would do covers, and little by little they started making their own songs and just kind of sneaking them in there. And then before you know it, they ended up just completely changing their name to Steel Panther because now there was just mostly mostly originals. Yeah. Um, did you start out just all covers? All originals. Oh, all originals. Oh my God! So the band started with all originals. Yes. Yes. Wow. So you went like a backwards way. We did. We went ass backwards. That was awesome. <laughs> Actually, you went the way that you went the way that you you, you go. Actually, you, you you made your own original songs. You put them out there. Oh my God, that's so kick ass! For some reason, I imagine in my brain that maybe you started out with all a bunch of covers, and then people are like, "Oh yeah, well maybe we should start making our own originals." But no, you actually all had all originals. Yeah, and and a lot of us were in uh, a cover band together called Stolen from the Radio, where we played seventies, eighties, and nineties rock music, and it got to the point where we wanted to start making our own music and creating and we wanted it to, to be on the countryside so we kind of put Stolen from the Radio on the back burner and, and started writing music How many writers do you have in the band? I'd say uh, five of us write uh, Desiree, my sister, writes the majority of the lyrics and then all of us kind of contribute in with you know, I do my own harmonies and and, and contribute to the lyrics a little bit and the music and then everybody else contributes to the music whoever comes up with a lick and then we we form it from there or it starts out as a lick and then we turn it into a song okay so sometimes oh that's cool so sometimes the lyrics come first and you go hey what would be a good melody with this and then sometimes you got a melody and then you just come up with the lyrics after that exactly exactly now how how long how long were you working on these original songs before you went out there and you actually and you played them for people? Um, some are, are shorter than others and some are longer than others. Like some some original songs like we've worked on for two years and still haven't played them yet, you know. Um, and then others, one band practice, one jam session, and it's it's a written masterpiece. You know, it just depends. It depends on the, the feeling that you get from the song and and how and depending on which way it's done, if it's the music first, like how fast those lyrics kind of resonate with you, like with the music, and then you let them out there. So it's different. It varies. It varies from song to song. So do you sometimes come up with a melody in your brain and then you just, you know, you send it off to one of them and then it just starts growing from there? Exactly. Exactly. Or like the, the one of the guys will be jamming on something at home and they're like is this something and then it's like um yeah that's something let's let's run with that you know see where it can go it sounds like your group is very uh ensemble based and very uh willing to accept each other's uh ideas and in uh and imaginations and 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 help each other kind of grow that idea yeah yeah i mean don't get me wrong there are some fights creative fights about where we want something to go and, and what key we want it to be in and, and how we sing it. 
and how we play it. Is it going to be a fast song or a slow song? And, you know, so they, there's definitely some fights, but for the most part, we all work really well together. So do you have just one person, like who has to put their stamp of approval on it before it moves forward or can you or is it like a thing where like you have a, like you know whatever the majority is we're like no, no no we all like this you know three of us like this thing and the other two don't or what have you like how does how does that work how do, how do you how do you actually figure out this is the thing we're going to keep um well it, it usually majority does rule but then there's other times where we're our bass player, Morgan. He'll put his foot down on something that he doesn't like, and as will uh, Desiree, our lead singer, will put the foot, her foot down on things that she doesn't like, and she's very adamant about it, and they end up being the ones to butt heads mm-hmm. and get into huge fights. But, you know, and then we get another song out of it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, it, it works, you know? We go in writing one song, and then you come out with two because... Your best friend slash bass player just pissed you off, you know? So it works. So, um, do, where do you have your music right now? Where is your music available? It's on Spotify. Oh, it's on Spotify. Yeah, it's on Spotify. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then uh, iTunes. You get it from iTunes. And, yeah, that's, that's basically it online on our website. So... Can you uh, can you can you talk about what happened when you went out to um, was it Minnesota? Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. No, no, Where was Minnesota. it? Minnesota. Oh yeah. Yeah, I went to Minnesota and played two shows out there. One in the cities and one in Duluth, Minnesota. Got flown out there. They played our songs on the radio, and unbeknownst to us, we were in a in a liquor store and and I was wearing a Fifth of Birmingham shirt and the checker was like hey are you that that band that I keep hearing on the radio that's that's playing over here at Clyde Irons house and sure enough he was right that's exactly the venue that we were playing and and we got recognized in a liquor store it was the coolest thing ever and then he's like hey buddy come over brought over his other buddy who is co-worker and was was tripping out on us and we were tripping out on him it was a pretty awesome awesome scenario to be in so because that's where your dad's from yeah. did he have close relationships with the, the um like how were you able to get on the radio there i have no idea i have no idea it just i guess they i think it was just one radio station that they kind of put us in the syndication for that weekend and there was like an a there was a commercial like of like what like upcoming shows in the area and that we were on one of them and you know probably in the in the Duluth Weekly if there is one you know I don't know um, but yeah it was a great show huge show a lot of people turned out but it probably helped as well that we were playing with Phil Solom who is the the lead singer of the Rembrandts who has oh, cool. the the friend song the friend theme song theme, theme song so he closed the show so he brought a lot of the crowd as well did you um, did you have t-shirts at that time did you have things that you were able to sell in the merchandise booth we did we did we had t-shirts and CDs and we made some money there's some people rocking the 5th and Birmingham shirts out in Minnesota for that's sure that's fantastic yeah. you know you hear people say you know I'm, I'm huge in Japan so you're huge in, in Duluth <laughs> I'm huge in, in Duluth eh don't you know <laughs> it's awesome so just to know how many people are out there in Duluth walking around as mobile billboards they're walking around as billboards wearing your shirt how many yeah there's probably a whole bunch I don't know yeah like maybe like 40 to 50, maybe? And how many do you think have your your uh, your music that they're playing for all their friends? I'd say maybe more like 100 to 200. Wow. Yeah. And plus, who knows how many new fan- people started flocking into your music because of those, those CDs that are out there in the world. Yeah. Word of mouth has done well for us, for sure. Our next goal is to uh, play... NASCAR one year at the Auto Club Speedway in, in, in Fontana, California. How do you get that gig? Well, uh, we were we were really close, but they needed us to, they wanted to come check us out, and we didn't have a gig, and we couldn't get one together in time, so we missed 
playing this past year, but I think we we know who to contact now, and we just need to make it happen again. What does a band play uh, during a a race a racing situation? Do they play in the middle? You play in the fan zone before the race starts, or if you're super cool, you play in the infield on Saturday night. And really, though, it's the other way around. The really the you know the the big bands like this year in the the fun zone Bush played. But what you really want to go see is when you stay in the infield on Saturday night. They have a band that plays for all the people in the infield, and that would be epic to play that. It, it it would be less exposure, but it would be for more of like a family feel, you know. And that's what that's what we love to do. We just love to play for for people that love good music. I'm imagining. Why do you suppose they don't let bands play in the middle? While the race is going on. <laughs> That'd be great soundtrack music. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. These cars are very fast and very loud. Really? Yes. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. Ah, uh, what about... The, what if they put speakers in, in, near everybody? Super loud. Super loud. Really? So it's just the loudest thing. The people are just watching this really loud thing. Yeah, it's, it's basically cars. 40 cars driving around a racetrack and all you hear is but imagine that times 40 and probably a lot louder and then for how long how long uh, about 500 laps how many hours does that equal two and a half to three and a half hours so three Dep- hours depending on how many cautions it can it can be more can people talk at the race races you can barely hear each other. You have to wait till the cars are on the other side of the track oh that God. you are. And how many how many minutes do you have until or, or seconds rather until they zip back around to your side? Fifteen, maybe. So you, you get that it's a new way of communication. You get fifteen second increments to talk to people. Basically, yeah. But it's the funnest thing ever. <laughs> it's incredible. That's like a whole new way of communication because you're like, okay, let's whittle it down. I have these few. I got to figure out how to make gold nuggets in my conversation right now. Yeah. We only got 15 seconds. Okay, okay. How am I going to word this just right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's, I bet you there are a lot of haikus written in those times. <laughs> so, uh, did you? So, okay. So for two and a half hours, people are just, 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 what? Zoning out to that sound. I bet. I bet it's like the ocean at some point. Some people fall asleep because it is. It's loud, but it can be rather soothing. It's so crazy. I've been falling asleep lately to these lucid dreaming binaural beats, and uh, and the, and it does, it does. You know the vibrations. They do give you these these interesting dreams, and they got all kinds. You know, ocean waves. They got fuzzy television. Or what is it? White noise. Uh, seagulls. Who knows what? I'm gonna look up and see if they got race. What would it be? Race car, race NASCAR. track. NASCAR. So there must be a one that helps you go to sleep with NASCARs racing around the track. Maybe so, maybe so. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, like, if you live near a spot where there's a lot of cars going by, uh, it could sound like the ocean eventually, just the sound of whoosh. You know, I'm talking regular cars, you know, yeah. not race cars by any means, but whoosh. You know, you can kind of, like, envision that. What sound would you imagine is the closest to the sound of uh, of NASCAR's NASCAR cars zipping around? Um, probably the freeway. The freeway. The freeway. For some reason, I was thinking of like hum- huge bees, like humongous bees, <laughs> huge yeah, mechanical bees. Probably like huge bees. On a, by a freeway. Huge bees by a freeway. You heard it here, for, <laughs> folks. You heard it here first. NASCAR is like bees, on a, mechanical bees on a freeway. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how many... You said you have... How many albums? One full-length album and two EPs. Oh, what... How many songs are in each P? Uh, each, each EP? Uh, I think we have four on the first one and five on, this, on the, the other one. How do you know when to stop it for an EP? Well, it's supposed to just be a little bit of what you have. So you give them just like three to five songs as standard. So five is the most for an EP? Usually, yeah. What would be an extended EP? Six songs or seven songs? Or maybe even eight? 
I think if you go anything beyond six, you're you have an out. Okay, now so you can actually say you could say that you could actually have a. Would you just call it a short album? Like if you got seven seven songs or whatnot? I wouldn't call it a short album. It is a shorter album, but don't, wouldn't you feel like if, if you were buying a full-length album at, with only six songs, wouldn't you feel gypped, you know? Yeah. But seven to, you know, 16, you know, you can all it can go to the other end, too. Like a full-length album, you have those guys that, like, want to do 20 songs, and it's, like, too much, you know? Sometimes double albums, right? I think yeah. Nine Inch Nails probably did that a couple times. Beatles, the White Album. That is a very large album. That's interesting. So, because there have been those albums that are only 10 songs, and I go, ah, uh, this is just not, I, I want at least maybe 12. <laughs> so, so, uh, okay, so, an EP, so what, it, so an extended EP is what? An extended EP, maybe, yeah. maybe six or seven songs. Hmm, that's so interesting. So you could have, you could have an EP, an extended EP, an album, but there really hasn't been something that's like in between the extended EP and the album. Is there a name for that one? I don't think so. Maybe you, you got maybe eight songs. Maybe eight song. I think I'd call that an album. That is an album. Yeah. What if each of those songs were a minute? <laughs> it's a tricky thing. It's hard. You could call it an eight-minute album. Eight-minute album. That's perfect. That, that could actually become its own thing, right? Yeah. The eight-minute album. Yeah. Bands that just do the eight-minute albums, they yeah. just keep doing it. Oh, my God, that's incredible. <laughs> so the eight-minute album could actually be shorter than some other band's EP. Exactly, yes, yes. God, that's incredible. Um, where can people find your music? Where can they find it? Um, oh, you said Spotify, you said iTunes. Yes, yes. What, what exactly are they searching for? What exactly are they searching for? You're searching for Fifth and Birmingham. Is it a number five, or do you write it out? It's 5TH, so the number 5TH, and Birmingham. With an H. With an H. With an H. Do you, are, how many members in your group are from Birmingham, England? None of them. There's a Birmingham, Georgia or something, isn't no, there? There's a Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, Alabama, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, because there's so many country stars coming from Birmingham, England, right? Yeah, there's a ton, I think. I don't know them. <laughs> I want to see... I want to see a band where there are members from Birmingham, Alabama, and members from uh, Birmingham, England. I want to see that. I would love to see that, too. Maybe they just call it Berm. Berm. Bermam. 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 What? Do you have an official website? Yeah, www.fifthandbirmingham.com. With a you five or F-I-F-T-H? Um, with the, the, the and written out with a five. And you can also get there by uh, typing in www.fifth and B. Well, that's good. You got a, a few ways yeah. connected. Yeah. We wanted the fifth and B because that's kind of like our nickname. Will you be. Uh, maybe that could be a new t shirt, fifth and B. Is yeah. that one of your t shirts or no? Um, our beer koozies basically say fifth and B. Oh. With then fifth and Birmingham underneath it. So, when do you plan on releasing all those other hidden uh, songs? That you're you've been working on. I can't reveal the date. I'd have to kill you. It's classified. <laughs> it's classified information. It's, it's an episode with classified information. Oh wait, okay, everybody, keep your ears and your eyes open for that.
around now. A song from January 30th, 1903 by Antonio Scotti as Tonio with the Metropolitan Opera Chorus and Orchestra beginning scene, act two, excerpt from Pagliacci Mabelson Cylinder Recording Hit it fellas, and one and two Are here to talk about the psychology of bicycling and in fact we are really going to talk a lot about social psychology biases uh, errors in judgment errors in thinking that result from just being a human do you ever wonder why humans get so mad about bicyclists running a stop sign have you ever been told not to bring a bicycle indoors and not given a clear and logical reason have you ever felt frustrated just by driving a car in city traffic amongst other humans? Before we talk about the many sources of error in human judgment regarding bicycles, let's start with some definitions. Prejudice, a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. Bias, prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another. Discrimination, the unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of humans or things, especially on the grounds of race, age, or sex. I can say that I am without prejudice because I run on programming. My programming not only tells me that I can attribute the fault to humans and it is their own stupidity or inability to make proper decisions that causes their errors. I, on the other hand, have programming, which makes myself function more effectively. <laughs> Okay, so before we go into the examples, let me talk about that real quick. So we had prejudice, bias, and discrimination. Prejudice is that idea that you don't really have all the information. You know, as the word says, prejudge. You're, you're making a decision on some individual and overgeneralizing based on the group that individual is in. And also there's not really any clear evidence to support what your judgment. So bias, is more of preference one group over another where you're like okay i love bicycles so i don't like cars you know that would be a bias toward bicycles discrimination is not just being prejudiced and like taking an individual and generalizing to over generalizing but it's actually more about actions that are taken that are disparate but it's actually you're treating groups differently just because they're in that group 
And again, it becomes an error when you're not discriminating for good reasons, you're just discriminating because they're in that group and it's not based on any kind of evidence or reality. So let's watch some examples. You're gonna decide, are they being prejudiced? Are they biased or are they discriminating? That there's gonna be a little uh, number and a letter in the upper left corner of the video. That's gonna be like, for example, the first one will say 1A. So just so you know for your records, that'll be, okay, write down 1A and then write your answer. A is prejudice, B is bias, C is discrimination. Well, I definitely prefer cars to bicycles. And uh, I actually prefer car drivers to bicyclists too, because they drive cars. So they're probably better. Now this one is interesting because it's clearly bias where this character is saying that he prefers uh, cars to bicycles, but that he also threw that thing in there that, so then therefore he also likes car drivers better than bicyclists. So that's where you kind of leave the bias arena and get into prejudice and possibly discriminating behaviors. So we'll say biased for this one, but there's also definitely colors of prejudice. If you see a bicyclist, you should shame them because it's really a bad habit and it really causes a lot of problems in society. So what we have to do is discourage the bicyclists from doing what they want to do. Okay, so this one is really about discrimination more than just prejudice because he's saying, you know, we have to take action, we have to discourage them, we have to shame them, you know. So again, you're doing treating one group differently than another. You're actually treating them differently, not just in your own psyche thinking of them differently, but treating them differently. So that is a clear case of discrimination. I think he's pathetic. You know that the United States, it could be very great, but they're so stupid. They never understand how great they could be. So poo -poo to them, you know. Okay, so this one's a tricky one because instead of looking at an individual and then making assumptions on the individual based on whether or not they're say American or French, as this person's saying, that they're really, he's really just comparing the two groups of Americans and French. So because we, there's no specific person involved here, it really could be a bias where this person has a bias for, toward French over American. He did say America could be great, but the people, the people are stupid. So that's why I think maybe this is more of a bias. Uh, there is also a prejudice here. Obviously, this person would be prejudiced if they saw someone, you know, whatever that stupid behavior that he's indicating. So I would say we can be sure that there's a bias and then we could kind of assume to some extent there's prejudice, but we can't be sure. I think bicyclists should be children because when I get older, I want a car. <laughs> <laughs> so this person is definitely discriminating because he's saying that you bicyclists can only be children so you're treating you're giving one group the ability to do something but not the other group now obviously he doesn't have any power to actually do any of that but i would say this is a discrimination a case of discrimination now it's not in the legal sense of the term or in any applied setting but in a theoretical setting this is discrimination well, the way I look at it is, every bicyclist I've seen has done something against the law, so they must be guilty. I mean, let's just look at facts. You look at a bicyclist, they run a stop sign. You look at a car driver, well, they might roll through it slightly, but they're stopping much more than the bicyclist would. This character is saying that bicyclists do this and car drivers do that. So it's not discrimination, probably not really an outright example of bias, but I would definitely say it's it's prejudice because again, this person's seeing a bicyclist and assuming whatever th this person's assuming about them, you know, they're l l not law abiding, whatever. So I would say prejudice in this case. First of all, I think the bicyclists are way too cocky. They ride their bicycles in and out of traffic. Ugh. And they don't have respect for people who can't ride. I try getting on a bicycle, I can't. I sit on that stupid little seat. You see, there's another bicycle. That one has a motor, but still, they're cocky. 
So I don't think it's a good idea to build bike lanes. Because if I can't do it, think of all the other people who can't do it. And they just get in the way of people like me who are, have an inability. <coughs> and it's unfair because I'm bigger than your prejudice against me. Okay, so this guy has a lot of issues, obviously, uh, as do many of them. And definitely, I would say prejudice. Okay, this guy's saying that bicyclists, they're cocky and this and that. So ascribing characteristics to bicyclists without really any good evidence. Now, the interesting thing here, we'll maybe get into this a little more later, but cocky is an interesting assertion because when you're commuting together on a road, it's kind of difficult to assess cockiness just from behaviors. Now you can to some extent, but I would say that's really a, one of the places where this person is really overreaching, where it's just not, um, just not able to make that judgment. And the fact that he's making that judgment about all bicyclists, that all bicyclists are cocky, including the motorcycle apparently. So definitely prejudice across the board here. Okay, so just to sum up, so you have prejudice, bias, and discrimination. Obviously, these characters have a lot of other issues. We're going to get into that. But I hope you can see the difference here. I mean, prejudice is really just the kind of internal opinion. Bias is more of the this versus that. And discrimination is this versus that, but where you actually take action. Mm -hmm.